Well, good morning. How are you this morning? The beautiful 8th of June. It's early, uh, early for, I guess, a long weekend. So for anybody who's joining me online, 6.30, a long weekend. You're an absolute champion. And my baby is with me. Thank you for joining me. Karen, I just so love your leadership. Sarah Reeve is out of bed, as is Gary. Oh, this is great. I didn't anticipate so many people joining me. I really thought that I would be online by myself. I'm going to have to to get an identity checkup. Good morning, Joe. It's wonderful to be with you all. This morning was chilly one. And Liz Barney, how are you doing? I bet you are looking forward to getting up and getting about. Uh, that's coming, my my beautiful friend. So hang in there. Uh, so glad that that leg is healing well. Well, I trust that you're having a, a, a great long weekend, that today is a day full of promise. Today is a day uh, full of provision. Today is a day to rejoice because he's made it and we're going to be glad in it. And uh, I think that's that's some good news right there. I'm going to dive straight in this morning. I was online just a minute or two late but hey thank you again for joining us uh, thank you so much for the incredible encouragement that we got yesterday from our online gathering in which we which we titled I can't breathe and it was talking about faith for the flames I'd like to like to dig down into that just a little deeper today really drawing something else out of Isaiah 1 but but first what we do is we love just to be able to set up for all of our friends and family who are watching, who are listening through later on in the week. It's great to have Pastor George with us, uh, spiritual father, founder of Abundant Life Church. Great to have you with us, Pastor George. But what we love to be able to do is we love to be able to record these in Facebook Live and so we get a chance to gather because gathering is so important in a world which wants to see us so isolated and so disconnected. Uh, so we'd love to gather online in a Facebook Live this then gets posted to YouTube and indeed to Spotify because we hang out for about 25, 30 minutes in this particular online gathering. So sometimes it's not always possible to watch it on Facebook, not always possible to uh, be able to, to listen to it um, in, in certain formats. So Spotify and YouTube, you can find us at Abundant Life Church Tasmania. And why don't you hit like? Uh, the subscribe that way it'll notify you when things are coming up it means a, a heap to me personally that you would like you would subscribe and that indeed you'd go and share and I know it takes courage to share some of these thoughts out but maybe there's something in this morning that you'll be able to share out maybe there's something that you can share in its entirety so uh, bless you as you do that and each time we gather we'd love to affirm why we are who we are and how we do what the Lord has actually asked us to do. And so one of the things that we value so much here at Abundant Life Church is we value people and communities, taking the first steps or, or the next steps of faith because people matter. They matter to Jesus. They matter to us. And we understand that these, these steps of faith are, are founded on belief. And so as our belief grows, so our development follows. We say this all the time, where the mind goes, the, the person follows. And so we really trust that you don't necessarily have to believe the same as we believe this morning, but that by leaning in, we would actually grow in our belief and that as our belief grows, our behaviors follow that because we actually want to be a people of action. We are a people of power. And so we value people, we value communities, and particularly as we're talking about Faith for the Flames, it is actually about how we are situated, uh, we are connected in with, with Jesus, and then how we actually take that into the world, not in uh, judging, but in adjusting. And in fact, I'd even encourage you this morning, if you're, even if you're watching this back later on in the day, why don't you type this in now, we are adjusting, not judging. Why don't you type that in, we are adjusting, not judging. It's not actually a matter of us are judging even ourselves, uh, beautiful uh, Tanya, who's joining us. It's not a matter of us judging ourselves. It's a matter of us adjusting uh, because we don't come as people of faith to a judgment seat. We come to a mercy seat. But he's constantly wanting to renew our thinking. He's constantly wanting to renew our relationship with him and therefore each other. And as we do that, the, the way that our, we walk out faith and the way that we walk into flames not run from them not hide from them not diminish or deny them but the way we carry our faith into the flames is so founded 
on our belief. So we believe that uh, we are all growing. Uh, we get a choice as to how fast and how far we'll grow, but that's kind of cool. We, we love honoring and celebrating who you are as a person. God has handcrafted you. His fingerprints are all over you. And so we celebrate the things which are going on in your world, but we love to honor the gifts that he has placed deep inside of you as a, as a mother, as a father, as a, as a cook, as a servant, as someone who may deliver food or someone who may uh, do a presentation like this, someone who may write a song uh, or be leading in the workplace, someone who may be just crossing the street and, and, and giving someone uh, an encouragement. This is a gift that God has given you. We honor that. And by doing that, we actually see the connection that we have with our world. The connection that we have with our Father, with Jesus, is so imperative but the way that we connect with God, we abide in Him, we rest in Him, we take our life sustenance from Him, means that we can connect with our world, we can take this faith into our daily lives, faith into the flames, and we can indeed then connect and take His truth, His love, His grace, His mercy into the entire world. So today we are adjusting, not judging. Thank you for, for putting that up. And uh, we are going to dive into today and just look at a couple of very simple things. I want to read a whole smack of scripture today because I think that my first point as we look at this, I can't breathe um, issue in our land. And it is so real. And this actually isn't just a, a race issue. It is outworked in race, but it is founded in uh, a deep spiritual need and a deep spiritual hunger and thirst that sadly when that is not met in that connectedness with Jesus, with a belief of who he is and who I am, it plays itself out in oppression, not just oppression of one skin color against another, one gender against another, one age against another, but it's actually a, it's a war for power. When really Jesus didn't come to say, I'm coming to bring power, he said, I'm coming to bring you truth and grace, this grace which accepts this truth that adjusts. And so I want to read scripture today because our issue is actually a spiritual problem. And we kind of, we don't like that sometimes because we go, I want to be, I want to do, I want to do. But if we actually understand that the doing comes from having a well inside of us, a spring of living water, that whoever would drink from that well of Jesus living inside of us, making his dwelling inside of us, we don't thirst and we actually have clear pure, refreshing water, truth, grace, love, peace to carry out into all the world. So as we look at, I can't breathe. And what is oppression doing here locally, here in our own homes, as much as it is over the globe? We're talking about carrying our faith into the flames. And so I want to contend with us and wrestle with us and, and, and sit into some uncomfortable places this morning because the, the world is an uncomfortable place. And if we won't allow ourselves to become uncomfortable, if we won't allow ourselves to be challenged and then to be adjusted, then we actually we deny what is going on in the world. And we tend to be ostriches sticking our heads in the sand. And then that, that faith ends up becoming religion. That faith ends up becoming a whole set of rules. And rules don't set us free. They actually just set more chains around us. And Jesus said, I've come that you would know hope i have come that you may know freedom i have come that you may know love and by knowing that hope that freedom and that love you may help that be known to other people also in chain so so i want to uh, so how do we get here what do we do and then to reflect back again finally on why do we run to jesus uh, in order to be able to run out into a world that so desperately needs the truth and the love the experience the story the uniqueness of you that uh, they actually really need to see, they really need to hear, they really need to know. So I, I want to read Isaiah to you, but I, before I do that, you know, you know, we are kings and queens, we are made in strength and we are made for strength. But this strength is not of our own making, that, that we understand that Jeremiah tells us that, is it Jeremiah? Yes, yeah, Jeremiah, that not by might and not by power, says the Lord, but by my spirit. And so you are a king and you are a queen. You are made in his strength and in his image to carry forth his strength and to represent uniquely you, but represent his image, his love to the world. But if we try and do it from ourselves, we end up getting broken down. We end up getting weary and we'll address that. But uh, we have to understand that it's from him. This is a spiritual 
challenge. Uh, Karen spoke so powerfully yesterday about this issue of surrender. And as we see this as being a spiritual problem, not a race problem, not a gender problem, a spiritual uh, brokenness, we go, well, I'm, I'm challenged by that, but the challenge is actually started with surrender. So can I encourage you again, even if you're watching now, thank you to my friends, but if you're watching this later on in the day, listen to this later on in the day, why don't you write in, I surrender. I surrender, Lord. I surrender to your spirit. I surrender to your love. I surrender to your adjusting this morning. I surrender. Why don't you type that in now? That'd be fantastic. So I'm going to read to you as I want. Can I encourage you? Don't go quoting this to the world. We don't need to go and quote scripture. We live scripture. Uh, Paul tells us that we are his living love letter. We are the red letters of Jesus in the Bible saying, this is how I want you to live. Not so that we go and quote scripture, but that we go and live scripture. And as we live it, they go, where did you get that from? Or, or how did you get that? And then from the question, we get to bring this because this is an incredibly challenging word. So let me dive in. Isaiah 1, I'm reading from the Passion. If you've got a Bible, open it up and read along. If you don't have a Bible, then our church app, the Abundant Life Church app, has a Bible and is attached to that. You can read it straight there or it'll take you, if you want to read other translations, it'll take you to the U version where you can read it in the message paraphrase, you can read it in the Passion, you can read it in the NIV, the New Living, the Amplified, you can go old school and go King James. Uh, so why don't you read this along with me. It says, here is the vision that Isaiah the son of Amos received by divine revelation concerning what was going to happen to Judea and Jerusalem. The first thought is if we talk about this as a spiritual need, I can't breathe. How do we carry faith into flames? We have to actually have a spiritual revelation. We have to have the eyes to see. If all we see is in the natural, if all we do is in the natural, and it's not by divine revelation and by his supernatural, adding his super to our natural, but then it has to come from the divine and the intimate and the personal empowerment of a personal relationship with Jesus, fueled by his Holy Spirit, founded on his word, then we truly have something of substance. Truly then we have something which is not just knocked around by, by every other wave of, of cunningness and, and deception and, and what sounds right to a man, but it leads to destruction. Spiritual eyes to see it says in verse 2 listen O heavens hear O earth for the Lord Yahweh has spoken you know again it's this sense of the spiritual issue is actually about I, I, I hear you Lord and I'm looking for you Lord we we are so blessed that there is so much information in the world today so much that we can read so much that we can digest too much at times but if we are not turning our attention our hearts our focus to what the Lord is saying and to what the Lord is revealing. Again, it's so easy to go off mainstream media or just the snippets that we get on Facebook, the, the great quotes that we put up, and we, we don't want to stop people in this time utilizing Facebook or Instagram or Twitter to be able to communicate. It's so important that we have a voice and a vehicle to, to both clarify our feelings and to learn, but it's got to have a greater substance Right, amen, if you believe that. So listen, O heavens, hear, O earth, for the Lord Yahweh has spoken. I tenderly nurtured children and made them great. Thank you, Jesus. But they have rebelled against me. We're going to get hard now, or he's going to get hard. We're going to try and render this and allow ourselves to be justed. Even a dumb ox instinctively knows its owner, and the stubborn mule knows the hands that feed him. But Israel, God's people, doesn't know me, nor do my people understand. We're not living by divine revelation. We've stopped listening. We've stopped seeking. And we've lost the, the one who has truly shapes us. And it says there we've actually rebelled against him. We've, we've, we've cast off knowledge of God for knowledge of the world. Isaiah then comes and says, this is the indictment. This is the situation. This is the condition that you're in. Oh, how this nation keeps sinning. And we don't like the word sin. How do you judge me? Why do you tell me I'm not doing something right? I'm not doing something you know, better. Now, this is actually God saying, would you examine your heart? How are you living? How are you thinking with me? How is your belief about my goodness, my mercy, and my plans and purposes for your life? How is that outworking in you? And when we find something that is not of him, not of faith, 
then it is sin and he adjusts that. So how this nation keeps sinning, how this nation refuses to be adjusted, see them dragging the heavy burden of their guilt. They're corrupt children, descendants of evildoers. He's really challenging us now. They have turned their backs on the Lord God and despised the Holy One of Israel. And your heart and your will are weak and faint. We've got to look at this in the context first of our own lives and then in the condition of the world. You are corrupt from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. Ouch. There is no integrity, nothing but bruises, putrefying sores and raw open wounds. They cannot be drained or bandaged or soothed with oil. Guys, we can go, oh, hang on, that's really tough. But then we spoke yesterday about fathers uh, you know, incinerating their children in, in, in hatred. We talked about uh, nations causing their own citizens to have to flee because their homeland has become the mouth of a lion. We talk about you know such violence and, and pain pouring itself out and rioting and looting and other acts of violence because of the acts of violence perpetrated against them. And we have to understand this within the wider context. Our world is is a, is open sores, not not drained, bandaged, or soothed with oil. Your country is devastated, verse 7. Your cities burn to the ground. Foreigners plunder your crops before your eyes with nothing but devastation and destruction in their wake. And the daughter of Zion is left as helpless as a deserted shack in a vineyard or like a flimsy shelter in a field of cucumbers in every way like a city besieged. This is, the, this is our families. This is our education system. This is our economies and our environments. If the Lord of angel armies had not left us survivors, our fate would have been the same as Sodom and Gomorrah, completely wiped out. If it hadn't been for his grace, we would have completely been wiped out already. Hear the word of Yahweh, verse 10, you leaders of Sodom, and heed the correction of our God, this call to be adjusted, this call to return, this call to repentance from God. It's a heart's cry, not just a, not a hand to bash, but a hand held out to say, come home, your answers and your healing are with me. Yahweh keeps saying, why such countless sacrifices? What use are they to me? I've had my fill of your burnt offerings of rams and fatted animals. I find no delight in the blood of bulls, lambs or goats. And when you come before my face, who asked you to come trampling? On my courtyards, stop bringing your meaningless offerings. And as a church pastor, I've got to contend with this in my soul and for our, our gatherings and the way we do community. Your burnt incense stinks, your stained sins celebrations, your new moon festivals, Sabbaths, your various pious meetings. I can't stand them. He's not in, interested in our programs. He's interested in our heart condition and how we carry a renewed heart, a heart which was once stone and is now a heart of love and compassion and mercy into the world. I can't stand that stuff. He says, with all my soul, I hate your new moon festivals and feasts. He doesn't hate us. He loves us. He gave us Jesus. But he hates the trappings that we try and dress ourselves with. He, tries and he hates the way we try and make ourselves pious and self-righteous as opposed to taking his righteousness and living this out. Your new moon festivals and your feasts, they're nothing but a burden. And I'm sick and tired of carrying it. When you stretch out your hands to pray, I will hide my eyes from you. Repeat your prayers all you want, but I will not listen. For your hands are stained with innocent blood. We covered that yesterday in terms of how we actually are, are standing for the oppressed. And our hands of innocent blood happens when we stop our ears up or we won't speak or we won't give of our time, our talent, our tithe. We won't put our money where our mouth is. We just want vain rhetoric and, and glib answers and memes. Wash yourselves and make yourselves clean. Remove your evil actions from my sight and stop sinning. What are these evil actions? Verse 17 says, Learn what it means to do what is good by seeking righteousness, this spiritual issue, and justice, the natural outworking. Come on. That we seek righteousness, right relationship with him that says, my clothes are stained with selfishness and rebellion. My heart is, and we'll go on to this, my heart is stained like crimson. My, my soul is, is deep red like scarlet and yet he will come and he will wash us whiter than new fallen snow like white wool and as we do that we are right with him and we carry out justice for the oppressed for our women in domestic violence and finding inequality in the workplace children 
abused and overlooked in every nation of the planet, the first to suffer, the first to go hungry, the first to be abused, the most vulnerable being trafficked and trodden down. He says, if you have a willing heart, let me help you. And if you will obey me, you will feast on the blessings of the abundant harvest. But if you are stubborn and refuse to obey, the sword will eat you instead. And beloved, as we sit in this age on the 8th of July, 2020, we see a land locally, regionally, globally, eating of the sword and being eaten by the sword. And the Lord takes no pleasure in this. And he says, return to me first my own heart, then our communities of faith, and then into the world. You know, the religious leaders of Jesus' day, they had structured a system that exalted self-righteousness, that exalted this piousness, that excluded anyone that didn't live up to their standard. Jesus himself in Matthew 23, 28 said, You outwardly, you masquerade as righteous people, but in your hearts you're full of hypocrisy, and lawlessness. This is a tough statement. But we can't get healed if we don't know what the hurt is. How can we get the right medicine if we don't know what is ailing us? There's no point in giving cancer medication to someone with a broken leg. There's no point in giving Panadol to someone who needs something far stronger or, or surgical intervention. We need to understand that there is hypocrisy and lawlessness in my own heart. And then I don't set up a whole bunch of religious rules that I expect everybody else to live by and I congratulate myself on, ouch, but that we actually live this out. He came, Jesus came to break the rules. I had made so many rules out of 10 commandments of how we live with each other and how we live with God. They had turned them into hundreds of rules. Jesus broke it down into two. Love me and by loving me, you can love one another. By loving me, you can go into the world and you can teach them to, to obey, to understand and to live in the fullness of, of my word and my promise and my provision. Jesus came and his solution of love, his solution of seeking righteousness, his, his what do I do to do the works of God, it says in John 6, 29, I believe in him. He's such a simple understanding of what it means to be a child of God. Believe, receive, and then walk it out. In fact, why don't you write that in right now? I believe and I receive because there's two very distinct components of that. It's one thing to believe it. It's another thing to receive it. So again, now or later on in the day, write this in. I believe and I receive. And then we get to work it out. So what do we do? What do we do? Let's get practical. I want to just bring four really practical points and then I'll pray. It says the first thing we have to be able to do, if we want to renew, we want to return, we want to, we want to eat of the abundance of his hand, not, not harvest the sword in our homes, in our families, in our hearts, in our workplaces. The first thing we do is we seek him and we pray. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name, we read that in Isaiah, my children, I've nurtured you. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, will seek my face and will turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive them and I will heal their land. Oh, beloved, how much do we need a land to be healed, a land to be healed from, from political corruption, a land to be healed by, by ideologies which just say there are no truths, whatever you want, there are no moral absolutes. We need healing that says Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and therefore the life. We need healing in our land, but we can put up as much stuff as we want on Facebook, but if we won't seek him, if we won't humble ourselves and go, I need you, God. I am a sinner in need of saving. In fact, you have saved me. I am righteous. But come and heal our land and, and, and move in the, in the hearts of angry and broken and terrified men that they would impose their strength 
upon their wives and their children who they should be upholding and they should be championing. Heal our land, Lord God, from people who cast off restraint and live licentiously and lawlessly. Heal our land, God. But it's got to start with seeking him and prayer. I really wonder if if much of the, the, the Christian um, input into social media is founded on prayer or we read something and we go, people need to know that. As opposed to, Lord, would you empower this? Would you put fire upon this? And not the fire of condemnation, but the fire of conviction, the fire of shining light, the fire of, of refining and adjusting. Deuteronomy 4.29 if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul, you will find him. We will receive him and we have something to carry out. Our faith has a substance and authenticity, not just before the Lord, not, sorry, not just before the, the, the world, but in the Lord. He says, you're not a hypocrite. Your heart is mine and my heart is in yours and you have something of authority. To carry into the world. So we seek him and we pray. Isaiah encourages us to wait upon the Lord. I can't breathe. So wait upon the Lord. I, I, I have a faith Lord. How do I carry that into the flames? Wait upon the Lord. Isaiah says. But for those who wait on God's grace. Will experience divine strength. Isn't that what we need? Supernatural strength. His super on our natural. Into the world. And they will rise up on soaring wings and fly like eagles. They will run their race without growing weary and walk through life without giving up. You know, I, I understand why the church is, is uh, so attacked, vilified or seen as being irrelevant, irreverent in its, in its denial of need because we've given up in too many areas. And, and I don't believe that that is necessarily the, the whole truth of the church because I see the giant of the church rising up, not just in good works and goodwill, but in its proclamation and its boldness of good news. In the Isaiah, stop sinning and return to me. Wash your hearts. Know that you have a need and the answer is Jesus, but that we won't give up that we won't become weary of doing good, but we will hold on and we will see a harvest, that we will position ourselves as disciples and when the world comes, we will teach them to obey, to listen, to understand and to live in fullness. We pray, we seek, we wait, we gather, beloved. Hebrews 10.24, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them to acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. And I know that this online world that we've been forced into is a challenging one. I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea. I understand the tensions of what it is to do Zoom room meetings and to, and to have meetings like this when we'd so love to do it in person. But beloved, creative ways of meeting with each other. I, if it's not your cup of tea, can I can be honest with you? Get over it. We have to find creative ways of gathering together in small groups, in Zoom rooms, before we can come back into the large rooms. We don't know when that is going to happen. I had Karen and I had eight hours of meetings yesterday discussing and, and collaborating with how we can renew in-person gathering, but how we can also utilize online expressions that we can be creative and we can do beautiful works of love expressing itself. We gather together with every means that we have because we need each other. Verse 25 says, This is not the time to pull away and to neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. Beloved, if wherever you're listening to this, let me challenge you that re removing ourselves from gathering in person and online, if all we have at the moment is online, I know it doesn't satisfy the same way as in person does, but if we withdraw from gathering, it is habit forming. And so we have to persevere. We have to discipline ourselves. We have to rally each other and say, come on, I know that that is not necessarily what we hunger for, but it is what we have and we will make the most of it. And as we do that in his name, through his spirit, God will breathe upon it and we will be enlarged and we will be people of spirit carrying our faith 
into the flames. We should come together even more frequently. And I love the way that Abundant Life Church has taken up that platform and that position in online spaces five, six days a week. I'm so proud of you and the way that you have continued to gather and continued to, to persevere and to continue to discipline yourself even at 6.30 on a cold, long weekend. Finally, we have, to, we have to then move into obedience. We have to move into obeying him and the things that he asks us to do. I don't have the time now to read John 14, but he's saying, I promise that I will never leave you as orphans. I won't leave you or forsake you. I, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to remind you, he's going to teach you, he's going to lead you in the things that I'm asking you to do. James is very clear where he says, you show me your faith, I'll show you my faith. By what I do, by the thing, the words that I speak, by the posts that I put up, but also by the actions that I take to cross the road, to mow a next door neighbor's lawn, to deliver food, to give of, a, of an offering to missions that here locally, regionally, globally, for for mothers of preschool children, for Christian surfers, for youth alive, for compassion and, and for uh, free to be, can actually do some of the things that we cannot do ourselves that we would obey with our money we would obey with our time we would obey with our gifts we would bake we would cook we would love we would uh, visit in compassion we would call on the phone and just give some of our time to exhort and to to edify and to in in that prophesy his goodness and his love i'm going to finish by saying why do we do this because jesus is the answer. I loved quoting Stephen Furtick yesterday. He said, you know, if we're going to stand for the oppressed, we have to be able to sit with the oppressed. Ravi said, we can't carry hope to those we haven't sat with. We can't seek to heal a soul that we haven't first understood and loved. And yes, we have to, to carry this into the world. We have to be able to, to sit with those people that the Lord longs to love. But we first have to sit with Jesus. Why are we doing this this morning? It's an exhortation. It's a, it's a challenge to say, let's sit with the Lord. Let us pray together. Let us find creative ways of meeting. And let us discipline our hearts, our lives and our souls. That we would come before him. Because our land is in tatters. Not just uh, Hobart. Not just Tasmania. Not just Australia. We are a part of global citizenship. And when one part of our family in Africa hurts, we all hurt. When one part of our family in Indonesia, in India, in Europe, in South America, in the Middle East and in America hurts, we all hurt. And so we come and we sit with you, Lord. And let me pray for you, Father. We come and we sit with you and we ask that you would heal our land. We ask that you would first start healing our own hearts and revealing to us the things that we have to let go of, the things that we've dressed ourselves up in acts of self-righteousness, that we've judged others and we haven't allowed ourselves to be adjusted first. Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your hands, which are constantly held out to us, that says, come home. Those fragments of our heart, those fragments of our soul, those fragments of our thinking which aren't of you, that they will either be discarded or they will be returned into the fullness and that our lives would be a living offering for you. We surrender to you, God. We surrender to you and we say, I trust you that when you, when you uh, shine the light onto the areas in my life which don't reveal you, which aren't of faith, that I can come to you like a child and say, that's not your perfect plan, will and goodness for my life. And I trust that you would lead me onwards. I trust that you would heal, restore, renew, and then you would release that in me and in us. Father, I ask that today you would help us to find creative ways of expressing your love, of speaking your truth, of carrying faith, into the flames and so a world that is suffocating i can't breathe because of the oppression that we would be a people of spirit power word love grace and mercy and you would show us creatively practically how we can then be a people of belief leading to renewed behavior 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much. I've taken a few extra minutes this morning. We have got uh, the wonderful Kate Madden joining us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for Living What We've Learned. We've got Q&A on Wednesday night with Karen and myself. We've got a testimony coming up on Thursday night. Really looking forward to, to again showing how God has actually healed, restored, saved people on a Thursday night. Keep sharing. Find us on Facebook, YouTube. Well, you found us on Facebook, but share it on Facebook. Like us on YouTube, Spotify. Listen to this again. Share it with the world. Be courageous. Be bold. Be brave. And, and let the Lord take care of everything else. He will satisfy you. He will protect you. And God bless you as you go and love somebody. Thanks for your time today. Have a great day.